Jamestown, California is a small town in Tuolumne County that was founded as a result of the gold rush stampede in the 1840s and early 1850s. Its quaint and charming ambiance helps to feed the county's healthy volume of tourism. But something happened here in 1993 that sent shockwaves throughout the country and stirred parents everywhere to ask, could I do what Ellie Nestler did here? Hi, so welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I'm in the historic town of Jamestown, California, with its roots dating back to the gold rush. However, I'm not gonna be talking about that history. I'm gonna be talking about the history that happened here on April 2nd, 1993. I was right there behind me where the courthouse where Ellie Nestler shot and killed the alleged molester of her six-year-old son, Willie. And it made national headlines. And I'm gonna tell you about it on this episode of History Hunters. So it was right here that there was Jamestown Court. Ellie Nestor was here with her son Willie because Daniel Mark Driver was accused of molesting her son at a Christian church camp along with some other boys. The little boy was very afraid to testify against Driver. In fact, he was starting to get ill and puking. Ellie Nestor was really struggling with having her son testify. During the break, she wanted some Tums to calm her stomach, she reached into her sister's purse and found a gun in there, and uh, she decided to pump five rounds into Daniel Driver's head. By the time they took him out of here on a stretcher, he pretty much had expired from his wounds. Now, of course, she was put up for murder herself. While there were a lot of people who were heralded her as a hero for slaying her son's alleged child molester, it wasn't a very smart thing to do because it immediately separated her from the very people that she loved and the ones that she was trying to protect. I don't think she thought it through the way she thought it was going to end up because she was instantly arrested. She spent several years in a women's prison in Central California. Meanwhile, her sister had to raise a little Willie. Willie had a difficult time with everything. He was in and out of trouble with the law, and he also ended up in prison for murdering somebody in a fit of rage. Public support for Ellie kind of went by the wayside when it was later discovered that she had methamphetamine in her system, which probably contributed to the actions that she took that day, April 2nd, 1993. You know, people say that my support's gone down. I don't believe that. I Every place I go, I get smiles and stuff. There's still, you know, um, you know, I mean, the fact is I did kill a man, so that's still, you know, I mean, you know, that was wrong what I did. But on the other hand, I think a lot of people understand the frustration that I went through. Driver, who was 35, had prior convictions for child molestation. In 1983, he pleaded guilty to lewd and lascivious conduct with two San Jose area boys who were 8 and 10. He served only 150 days in jail, fined $750, and placed on probation only to repeat his perverse crimes. After he moved to the Sonora area, he had molested the 11-year-old son of his girlfriend. He also molested four boys at the youth camp, including the Nestler boy. It was apparent to Ellie that justice would not be served. Ellie expressed guilt about killing Driver and says she only took drastic action because she knew the courts would go light on him and he would continue molesting boys. Yeah, I have regrets. I am sorry that I killed someone and that I'm not with my children. But on the other hand, I wish the judicial system would have taken care of it. I wish I wouldn't have had to, let's put it that way. When a relative told Ellie, you saved a lot of boys, she answered, yes, but I didn't save my own. William, nicknamed Willie, repeatedly landed in juvenile hall, in teen work camps as a youth, and in jail as an adult. He was booked into the county jail 18 times on various charges, including robbery and drug possession. Nestor's taking matters into her own hands in the shooting of drivers sparked a significant national debate and prompted tighter courthouse security across the country. Ellie Nestor received both worldwide support and condemnation. Her story became a 1999 TV movie called Judgment Day, The Ellie Nestor Story. Her story was also featured in tabloids and in Red Book magazine. 
While free on bail, Ellie Nessler made several TV appearances, including the Maury Povich show, in which she revealed that she had been molested as a child, a secret that she kept from everyone, including her sisters. Ellie was sentenced to 10 years in prison for the murder, but after three years, she was released on an appeal based on juror misconduct. Rather than opting for a retrial, she pleaded guilty to the lesser charge of manslaughter and was paroled with time served. But Ellie found herself back in prison after being convicted in 2002 of buying 10,000 pseudoephedrine tablets used to make methamphetamine. She served more than three years in prison and was released from a women's facility near Chowchilla in 2006. However, her battle against breast cancer ended when she died at the UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento the day after Christmas in 2008. She was just 56 years old. This is no longer used as the Jamestown Court. It's now the Sheriff's Department of Tuolumne County. It was actually used as the Justice Court from 1955 to 1996. So I think we're gonna head up and I'm gonna show you a couple other places that were affiliated with the life of Ellie Nestor, who has passed away. We're also gonna try to find her grave in Angels Camp, California. This is an old cement plant on Shaw's Flat Road near Highway 49. It's a very, very bright day. And uh, the reason I brought you here is because this uh, right here is where Ellie Nestor lived when she attacked Daniel Driver. Uh, she lived in a trailer back here. The house that's back there right now wasn't here at the time, but this is where Willie Nestler attacked Mr. Davis. Ellie lived back there with her two kids somewhere back there. The trailer's been removed, I believe. That house wasn't there. But Ellie knew this place very well. It's been attacked by vandals. William Nestor was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison for stomping 45-year-old David Davis to death. Nestor had allowed Davis to live on his family's property in exchange for cleaning up the place. But the agreement quickly soured. In mid-June 2004, Davis called the Sheriff's Department and accused Nestler of trying to steal tools. In front of deputies, the 6'2", 230-pound Nestler lunged at Davis, hitting and punching him. The deputies restrained him and promptly took him to jail. William pleaded guilty to misdemeanor battery and received a 60-day jail sentence, but was released halfway through it for good behavior. Within an hour of his release, Nestor went to his family's land along Shaw's Flat Road next to the old cement plant. He broke into a trailer where Davis was sleeping and pulled him out. Davis, who had a spine injury that limited his mobility, tried to flee but tripped or was tackled. As Davis lay on the ground pleading for mercy, Nestor viciously stomped his head. Davis died the next day in a Modesto hospital and Nestor was prosecuted for murder. He expressed no remorse for the attack, claiming he was railroaded by the system. So I came over here to show you and tell you about a personal experience that I had here. I was going down Shaw's Flat Road, going straight to Columbia, California. It's a state historic park and uh, stopped at the stop sign there. And this car pulls up to make a right. And I look over and it was Ellie Nessler. She was going to Sonora. We have arrived at the Altaville Cemetery and have actually been spending quite a bit of time uh, trying to find Ellie Nestler's grave. I've got to say hi to my old friend here, James Rolleri, died in 1903. We were actually here before. He's the one who shot Black Bart in the last robbery at Funk Hill in Copperopolis in 1883. He died at the age of 38. He's here in the Rolleri family plot. And over across the street, we have a medical emergency taking place. That over there is the Angels Camp Police Department yard. It looks like they have brought in a Metaflight helicopter to whisk away somebody, probably taking them to a Modesto hospital. During our search for the grave of Alina Star Nestler, my eye caught the grave of Casey Nash, who died at the age of 24 in 2018. His grave marker notes that he entered the Frog Jump Champion of the 2014 Frog Jumping Contest held in Angel's Camp. His frog made a whopping leap of 19 feet and 5 inches. While they misspelled it here, apparently if you enter a frog to get them to jump the farthest, you are a frog jockey. 
The annual frog jumping contest is a tradition that began because Mark Twain wrote the celebrated Jumping Frog of Calabrias County, published in 1865. And I did find it. It's very corner of the cemetery, probably because she didn't want any kind of publicity. I'm sure the family didn't want uh, people coming out here to gawk at the grave, but you'll find her right over here next to the road. And uh, I'm not sure why this is here. It looks like this is a piece of cement from something. But right there, she doesn't even have a permanent marker. She's got a little marker there. It says Nestler 2009. Uh, looks like somebody's left this here. A little mound there covering her grave. After leaving the cemetery, we learned that Ellie's grave is very close to that of her parents, Ellsworth and Nellie Starr, who died in 1988 and 1982, respectively. I was able to find it because in the background of the findagrave.com picture showed a cement block behind it, and it's almost way out of the way. You would have, wouldn't even think to look here. I think just about the tragedy of this lady's life, how she was kind of, her hand was kind of forced in it. I mean, she had a choice whether or not she wanted to shoot Daniel Driver in the head in a courtroom. And I think it was a very unfortunate choice in her life. She even told Oprah on national TV that she regretted doing it because what it did was take her away from her children. And that wasn't good for Willie, I know that. He faced a life of crime after that. We got a medical emergency taking place over here. The helicopter is taking somebody off. While a real life emergency was taking place near the Altaville Cemetery, I reflected on how the beating of a heart is fragile and fleeting. I couldn't help but think about the chaos created in the Jamestown courtroom by a vigilante three decades prior and about how police and paramedics had to deal with a grim situation. It was an eerie reminder of the horrifying termination of Daniel Driver's life and his abrupt denial of a fair trial and the likely outcome of a conviction and a far less severe sentence than the one that Nestler delivered. I also didn't forget that Driver's sins brought this upon himself and others. The biblical passage of Luke 17 too reminds us that it is a really bad thing when our sins hurt others or when we become the source of another person's sin. So true, especially in this case. my children. But on the other hand, I wish the judicial system would have taken care of it. I wish I wouldn't have had to, let's put it that way. There were uh, four other little boys besides my son that was testifying. The questions that were asked was, how many times did he sodomize you and did you like it? Well, who cares? The boys were six years old. They were, you know, raping our children to get on the stand. And my boy was too sick. He was vomiting. I says, um, you know, Willie, you have to do it. And he was vomiting, and he says, Mom, I can't. Why did you feel you couldn't? Because I was, because I was scared, and when I was 63 in my life, and I thought that he was going to hurt me again when I went in there. <laughs> 